In this video, we will show you how to replace your fuel injector. On this Honda Civic, you will have four of these located directly along the top backside of the engine. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing you will have to do to replace your fuel injector would be to relieve the fuel pressure from in the system. To do that, we'll be starting in the passenger compartment. Let's make our way underneath the driver's side dash. You're gonna find the fuse panel. We're looking for fuse number two, a small blue 15 amp fuse, all the way over towards the left. Let's go ahead and use some pliers or the fuse removal tool and pop that right out of place. And that's what that looks like. Now, while we have the fuse out of place, let's continue on to attempting to start the vehicle. You might find that it starts and stalls out or it doesn't start at all. Perfect. Now we can reinstall that 15 amp fuse back in slot number two. You want to make sure you press it in all the way so it makes good contact. Now we can make our way back to the fuel cap. Now let's make our way back to that fuel door. On our way, we'll make sure we push on this button. We'll remove that fuel cap to make sure there's no pressure in the system. Leave this here for now. We'll make sure that we put that back in the proper position in the end. Now that we've removed that gas cap, let's make our way into the passenger compartment. We're going to put the key in the on position, turn on the wiper blades, and once they're in the fully upright position, turn off that key. Leave them in this position and we'll continue under the hood. On the battery, you'll find that you have a 10 millimeter nut holding the cable in place. Let's loosen this just enough that we can remove the cable from the battery itself. Once you have that off of there, just give it a quick inspection for corrosion, clean it up as necessary. We'll set that aside. Now we'll open up the hood and we're going to start removing the cowl. On this, you'll find that you have a rubber seal. We'll just pull this away a little bit. You don't need to remove it entirely, but on each side of it, you want to go to at least where this area meets. You can tell it's two separate pieces. Now I'll use a trim tool underneath this little trim piece. We'll pop this up. We'll have to replace that one. Now at this point, you can take hold of this and start lifting it up and away. It's going to separate from this area here. There we are. This just clips in. I'll put that back. Now we'll do the same on the other side and meet in the middle. Right in the center, we have another one of those push clips. Now that we have that pop free, we can carefully start pulling this away from the vehicle. Keep in mind, on the passenger side, you will have a washer fluid hose that you will have to disconnect. You can see that it's split right here. We'll just gently tug on this to separate it. Double check to make sure that it's reusable. It's not torn, worn, or damaged. And now we can remove this from the vehicle. With that out of the way, we can start removing the lower cowl tray. On each side of this, you'll find that you have two 10 millimeter headed bolts and two 12 millimeter headed bolts. We'll start by removing the four bolts on each side and then once again, we'll meet in the middle. Now we can take hold of this and remove it. With that out of the way, let's continue on up along the top of the valve cover. You'll find that you have two 10 millimeter headed bolts. Remove the pair. At this point, we can wiggle this around a little bit. We'll pull it out of place along here. And now we'll disconnect our electrical connector. Along the top of the connector, you'll find that you have a small squeeze tab. You can try to press in on that to unlock this. If it does not unlock, you can also use a small pick. If you're using a pick, you're going to come around the other end of that. Just try to get under this. Gently lift it up, being careful not to break it. 
slide that off of there. Give it a quick check for corrosion. Now we can move this around as needed. Now with that wire disconnected, we can remove this plastic cover. For this, you just want to take hold of it and carefully pull it away from the engine. Along the back side of it, you should have three little tabs that will fit into their rubber grommets. We'll set this aside. Now we can start removing the fuel rail from the back side of the engine. On this, you'll find that you have two studs that protrude upward, and there's a 10 millimeter nut on each one. Let's remove those nuts. Now let's make our way back here. We're going to go ahead and give this a tug. You'll notice that those studs kind of come up diagonally, so that's the direction that you will have to pull this to remove it. Now let's take this area, we'll slide it rearward. Follow each one of these wires. You'll find that you have a wiring harness that leads to each of the fuel injectors. To remove that wiring harness, we'll use some long nose pliers. You could also try to reach down with your fingers. These have two locking tabs, one on each side. So we'll just take hold of it, squeeze it, and lift it up and off. A quick check for corrosion, set that one aside and do the same to all. Now we'll use an angled pick and come right down along that fuel rail. We want to gain access to where the fuel line connects to it. There's a small gray plastic connector cover on this. We'll just pry this out of place. Make sure that is reusable. Now we can start disconnecting the line. On this, you'll find that you have two green squeeze areas. You'd want to squeeze those two together, and then you can gently pull this out of place. I want you to keep in mind, there is always the possibility that there's fuel or even pressure inside of the line. I'll use some long nose pliers to grab onto this. Pull that right off of there. Set that aside. Now let's pay attention to where the fuel rail connects to each one of the fuel injectors. In each of these four areas, you'll find that you have a metal clip. On that metal clip, there's an ear on each side. You want to gently pry that away and push it rearward. Obviously, we don't want to lose these clips, but we do have to remove them so we can get the fuel rail out of the area. There's one. Now we'll do the same to each one of the fuel injectors. Now we'll reach in here and you want to start removing that fuel rail. You might find that the fuel rail itself is stuck to the fuel injector. What you could do is carefully try prying up on this, but while you do so, keep in mind that the valve cover is made of plastic and you do not want to damage it. Go. Got a little bit of gas coming out of there, that's okay. Now we can remove that fuel rail. Now with the fuel rail out of the way, we have a clear view of all four of our fuel injectors making their way down the line. The process for removing one will be the same for all. To remove them, take hold of it and carefully pull it out of position. We want to be careful not to break it off in the engine. For this, you can kind of tug and twist at the same time and it should lift up and out. And there it is, friends. Now that we have that fuel injector out of there, we'll continue on to removing each one of the fuel injectors. They are much easier to put back together on the bench. Okay friends, let's get ready to install our brand new fuel injector. Now before you put this in place, it's important to make sure you lubricate each one of your O-rings. When doing this, we're just going to use a tiny bit of clean motor oil. With this well lubricated, we'll be paying attention to this area right along here. On the fuel rail itself, you can tell that there's an area for that to slide into perfectly. We'll get this aligned and slide it right in. There we are. Now we can continue on with our clip. As for the clip, you want to make sure that you have the two locking ears 
facing towards where the fuel injector would be located. Other than that, we'll just slide this right on over. Listen for a click from both sides and double check to make sure it is secured. Now we'll do the same to each fuel injector. Double check each one of the four clips. Let's get back over to the vehicle. Now back over at the vehicle, let's continue on with putting this in place. You want to be extremely careful for each one of those fuel injectors, making sure that they do slide into their proper placement, as well as each of those two studs. Feels like you have to force it, more than likely something is not aligned properly. Once you have that slid into place properly, we'll continue on with the two 10 millimeter headed mounting nuts. Snug them up and torque them to 7.2 foot pounds. Now we can reattach the fuel line to the fuel rail. On the fuel rail itself, it's common to still have your plastic connector in place. If so, you want to pay attention to each of those two ears. We'll also be paying attention to the fuel line itself. On the fuel line, you'll have two little slots for each of those ears to slide into. Let's get this aligned and slide it in. Listen for our click and give it a tug to make sure it is secured. Let's continue on with our electrical connectors. Press that in. While you press these in, you want to make sure you listen to a click from each one. Now we'll move along to those fuel injectors. Now we can take this and put it back in place. We'll put in each of our two 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts and snug them up. We'll install our plastic lock. There we are. Let's continue on to that plastic protective cover. Along the bottom of it, you have those three little ears that protrude out. And in the fuel rail, you have those three little rubber grommets. Let's try to get this aligned properly and slide it down and into position. Grab onto that, make sure it is secure. We'll slide the wiring into its position here as well. Now we continue on with this plastic cover. We'll start in each of these two 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts and then snug them up. Now let's double check everything that we had connected in this area. Once you've done that, we'll continue on with that metal cowl. Slide this into place. We'll be starting with each of our five 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts. We just want to start them in. Two along each side, one in the center. Let's get this center one. Now that we have each of those 10 millimeter headed bolts in, let's also do the 12s. Once those are in, we'll snug them all up. Let's get those 12s. Now that the lower cowl is in position, let's continue on with the plastic cowl. Along the rearward end of it, closest to the windshield, you'll find that you have several plastic clips that need to fit into their corresponding holes and slots along the body of the vehicle. Now before we put this all the way into position, we need to remember we also have that washer fluid hose that we do need to reconnect. We'll just take this and slide it into proper position, making sure it's nice and tight. Now we can take this and put it in the proper position. Make sure each one of those push tabs is aligned and press it down.
Now we'll press that rubber seal into place. Now we'll put in our push clips. Let's make our way over to the battery. We'll press that negative battery terminal all the way down onto the battery as far as possible. Use your 10 millimeter and make sure that nut is nice and tight. Double check the cable to make sure it is secured properly to the battery. Let's re-secure that fuel cap and close the door. Now the next thing we'll do is get inside the passenger compartment. We're going to turn the key to the run position without starting it. That's going to prime the fuel rail. After that, we'll turn it back and then attempt to start the car. Okay friends, we showed you how to install your fuel injector on your Honda Civic. After you've started the vehicle and turned it back off, double check to make sure you don't have a fuel leak. Aside from that, go ahead and take your vehicle for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.